you. So <laughs> yes, because <laughs> I have to, I have made a mistake in communication because I told uh, nobody was able to tell them in English that I had to change the bus. Ah, oh, we are in Italy. We have to speak Italian. Hello, hosts and travelers. Welcome to the podcast, Hosting Your Home. Each week around the world, millions of guests stay in other people's homes using the Airbnb platform. Debbie Herder looks for stories that come from these connections. Listen in as we hear stories that teach us the human side of hosting your home. Hi, this is Debbie. Welcome to Hosting Your Home. Many of you may know that Rob and I spent three weeks in Italy this October. What got us there was the Vacation Rental World Summit, a conference that I'd been wanting to attend for a number of years and put on by Antonio Bordelotti. I have been in communication with Antonio and a number of vacation rental owners in Europe that I really wanted to meet, so this was just a prime opportunity And I saw this conference come out and I said to Rob, hey, honey, you want to go to Italy? And he goes, oh, do I ever? His parents met there and he has has actually been wanting to go for a long, long time. So we decided to take three weeks and we went to Rome. Uh, We went to a little town called Cevita Nova. We went to La Marche and stayed with a friend there. And then we went to the conference in Florence. And from Florence, we kind of spread out a little bit, looked around at the countryside in Tuscany before we left Milan. I took my podcasting equipment with me. This is not a podcast about Italy itself, but I did do a couple of interviews that I'd like to share with you. And the first one is with Sarah Anselmi. She was our host in Civita Nova. We took a bus from Rome out to the countryside to a little seaside town called Cevita Nova and spent the night there. And Sarah was our hostess. She actually came the next day. She lived in Rome and then came out to her home in Cevita Nova for this uh, podcast. I'm sure she had other business to do too, but it was really great to connect with her. She's a delightful young woman. It was really fun to sit down with her and discover the things that we have in common. You know, when you do this kind of work, you share the same sort of issues. And it was really nice to get her take on what her, what her life is like. So I hope that you'll enjoy this conversation with Sarah. I found it to be just, just really, really sweet. One other thing I want to mention is that conversations like this and awarenesses like we have now of what it's like to stay in an Airbnb in Italy helps to bridge cultural gaps. And one of the things that I really appreciate about this business is that we gather an understanding of how connected we really are. So let's get started. Yes. I'm sitting here in the home of Sera and Selmi in Civitanova. Yes. Did I say that right? Yes. yes. Italy. Civitanova Marche. Marche. Yes. Marche. yes. Civitanova Marche. Civitanova. But it's very good. Yes. Thank you for Thank sharing you your to home. you. <laughs> now, Sarah, you are an Airbnb host and you have correct? two. Two properties. two properties. Yes. Okay. Can you tell us about them? Yes. One is this one. Mm-hmm. And uh, as I said to you, it was my own home and I thought to, to come to live here. Then life brought me in other, other ways, the other places. So now I live in Rome with my husband and this is my second house. I come here in summer to go to the sea, to see my brother. But uh, I decided to start this experience with Airbnb and also with hosting in general Mm -hmm. because I didn't want to rent the whole house. I prefer to use it also for my family and also to have my little office here. So I thought it could be a good way to 
to afford some expenses that the house needs and also to meet new people that is very interesting. And I started five years ago. Five? Okay. Yes, and I'm very happy for, in, for the experience of this property because I met some families that, are, that have become friends and so they, they still come here but they don't pay anymore because <laughs> I, I... You are softy. Yes, yeah, um, you know, in my whole life I always invited friends at home so when they are friends they can't pay but that's another oh, story. That's very nice. <laughs> yes. And uh, the other property is in Tuscany, and it is uh, mm, not like Civitanova. It is a very famous place, very touristic, because Chianti region is where they produce the famous wine, and also it is uh, a beautiful landscape uh, between Siena and Florence, very famous. And in Tuscany, you know, there are tourists from all, all over the world. Yes, yes. yes. And uh, my husband had bought a small apartment in a very old uh, village in Radda in Chianti. And this village was built in uh, uh, 1200, uh, so it's very, very old. Oh <laughs> my <laughs> yes. goodness! Yes, medieval. And uh, so we had a lot of problems also in the renovation because, uh, for example, the bathroom had a, a terracotta uh, drainage pipe and we had to find the pieces, the original pieces, to substitute them because they were protected from the landscape heritage of Tuscany, of course, to, to keep all the, the region so beautiful. They protect... So when you have to restore something, you have to reproduce the old things. Wow. And um, also for the roof, last year we had to completely um, recover it because the rain went down in the house. So th this house needs a lot of uh, expenses. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't have time to go there because Rome, Le Marche... And uh, it's a lot of have, traveling. Yes. So and we you, decided you said to. You yes. are an architect. Yes. Is your yes. husband also an architect? He's a lawyer. So okay. he works more than me, oh. <laughs> always on the phone. Yes. And uh, he, would, he wanted to sell this house because we don't use. But uh, I, pre I prefer to make this renovation last year and then we started with the same experience of hosting given that I had experience here. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, on one side it's easier because uh, in that case I rent the whole apartment. The house is at the first floor mm -hmm. in that old uh, village and it's all, all the walls are made by stone. It's very, very traditional building, uh, quite vernacular, <laughs> but in a good way. And uh, it has two double bedrooms, one bathroom, and uh, an open space with a very beautiful fireplace and uh, an open kitchen. And we asked a, a local artisan to, to make this kitchen all in wood, and it's very, very natural and very oh, nice. Sounds lovely. Yes, and there is a new fridge and um, a big uh, pantry that is uh, recessed in the wall, and this is very, very old. And um, so for four people, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's very uh, comfortable, but we also have a sofa bed, so if uh, we have two more friends, we can also <laughs> host them. Yeah. Yes, but of course, there is just one bathroom, so it's better for four. Mm -hmm. Here, I open a BNB, &B, so it's a room with a bathroom and a room with a bathroom, and I can host also people. In, in two different rooms, yes, and it's uh, I. I I have seen that people prefer, uh, they feel better in a whole apartment because it's more, there is more privacy, so they, they can stay alone. And 
Um, given that I started just um, last year, I still don't have many guests, mm. but uh, all the guests are from abroad there. Mm -hmm. So, for example, today is coming a lady from Australia, and uh, I had many, many um, uh, German, also Dutch, because uh, they visit Tuscany, they used to visit Tuscany. Too long. It's <laughs> yeah, wonderful. And um, for example, a, there is a, a traditional bike um, um, tour called Eroica. And all hey, can you say Eroica. That? It is a very old bike uh, ride. And uh, many people from all Europe come with uh, uh, old bicycles. They. they um, Uh, they dress all the uh, old dresses from the 50s and they oh my <laughs> they make this race so in october many people come in tuscany to make this and uh, the house is uh, along the eroica tour so Great. i have many cyclists as hosts yes they want to they want a place where to keep uh, safe also the bikes mm -hmm. so they come in the house with bikes mm -hmm. and uh, It's nice. I would like to uh, to be there um, personally because when I, when I um, find a person that makes this for me, I I am not happy because I would like to improve the service to to be to meet the people, to be friendly, and I don't know if that person is the same. Yes. So that's my concern. I would like to do it uh, personally, but I can't always because... <laughs> And because you do long-distance hosting, yes. who, how have you worked that out? I, we, we met Roberto. Yes. Is Roberto a family friend? Or how did you... Uh, Roberto, <laughs> there is a story okay. also for Roberto. He, was, uh, he simply was um, a, rent, um, a guest that rented the, the attic. Mm -hmm. And uh, he paid uh, his monthly his rent. And I made uh, the activity here with a friend of mine, Sonia, a girl. Mm -hmm. And she was very clean, very good in uh, managing everything. Then uh, it happened that Sonia got married and went in another city. And Roberto lost his work. So mm. he couldn't uh, uh, pay the rent and he is a divorced father with two girls, two daughters, very, very difficult for him. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to help him, uh, telling him, if you help me with a BNB, uh, you can stay here and we, we can share what we earn. <laughs> because I don't want to earn really with this, but simply I want to. I want that the house is not a big expense for me, so yes. it goes by herself. And Roberto, this is the second year that I managed the house with him, but he's not so good in the in the housekeeping. So I have to check and I have to tell him, uh, please improve this, please clean more, because I had some guests that complained about this and I'm very mm -hmm. sorry because I want to help, but I, I feel bad when someone finds that the house is not clean or something like this. So I want to train Roberto mm -hmm. better, mm -hmm. but it's not easy because uh, he's, Um, maybe no, I don't. I don't want to say because it's a, he's a man. Because <laughs> I understand. <laughs> But in Italy, men uh, often uh, don't know how to keep a house. Yes. So he's learning. <laughs> yes. And it, um, but uh, the municipality here mm -hmm. helps um, persons in his situation. So I. I always uh, I am in contact with the uh, social services. They check if Roberto is good, if he's not depressed, and uh, they will uh, help him uh, to pay the um, the old uh, debit. Wonderful. So I have to communicate to the social assistants if 
he he can work with me. He's good at, at this uh, this activity. So I, I feel I, I'm doing something for him yes. and for the society too, because in that period of crisis, if we don't help, mm-hmm. we uh, we used to pay to help Amnesty International or. UNICEF, okay, but if I know someone and I can help directly, it's also better. That's it's wonderful. also a good thing. Yes. And that's because there is Roberto, but I I feel always yes. scared about what people can think. Yes. So. We, we, and we can talk about that after we're done talking here, too. We can discuss some things that I might be able to help you with there. So what about Tuscany? How do you do your long-distance hosting in ah, Tuscany. There is better. It's more expensive but better because I found a lady that's, that that uh, works in uh, many houses there because everybody uh, rent his second house in in Tuscany. And uh, she speaks five languages, so better Wonderful. than me. Yes. <laughs> and she also can cook and um, and make a catering service. Uh, she lives at uh, five minutes from uh, my property, so she can go meet people and uh, give the keys and also stay at their disposal if they ask something. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, very good. And you said you've been doing that for now one year in Tuscany? Yes. Okay, and how's that working? Are you are you able to pay off some of the debt with the... With the new roof and the... Ah, still not. Still, <laughs> but still uh, uh, otherwise, the house would be empty. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it's something better, yes. of course, because we go there two or three times a year for the Palio of Siena uh, or for um, October. That is very beautiful colors, but um, we, don't, we don't have time to go there so mm-hmm. often, so... It's uh, anyway. It's better because I earn something, and uh, the house is more. Uh, and I am motivated to to keep the house nice, to uh, buy something to put at the wall, mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. to decorate it continuously. Yes. Do you rent on any of the other platforms? Do you only use Airbnb, or do you use HomeAway, or? Uh, any of the other European platforms? I use HomeAway, but I had just one guest okay. from HomeAway. Okay. And then I am on Booking.com. Booking.com. But Booking, it's <laughs> it's very good platform to have visibility. Mm-hmm. But uh, people um, that book on Booking uh, are very um, addicted to hotels. They expect, I use yes. booking for here. I have been using for years mm-hmm. to find a hotel. So now it's a new thing that I have also houses mm-hmm. and apartments. So um, maybe they expect some service, some more more services. Right. Um, the ideal for me is Airbnb because um, yes. it is clearly what I offer, and people already know. Except for Italians, <laughs> because not not everybody understood this kind of um, hosting. I receive a lot of uh, requests for uh, uh, wool year rent yes. uh, or just um, different something that I can't uh, simply uh, confirm in the request, but just to just to talk. They pretend to make a booking just to ask something else. Yes. So many, many responses, many answers. But and uh, foreign uh, people uh, seem to be already um, trained mm-hmm. to this kind of way to to yes. to travel. I, you're a super host, aren't you? No, Did I no, see no. You are? I no. thought you. I thought I'm I saw not. that. No, <laughs> because booking is my main platform. I receive a lot of bookings from booking, so I okay. I have to put off the availability on the calendar, and so. <laughs> I understand. And then I also received some complaint about uh, some detail <laughs> because of Roberto, and as I said, 
I'm sorry, but... Well, I would like for people listening to know that this is a fine house. So two bedrooms and two bathrooms, and and it's a, it's a cute town. And for us, it was it's been a wonderful respite from Rome. We loved Rome, but... It's so much, you yes, know, that yes. it's really nice for us to be here and just kind of even out a little bit. And I think you've got a lovely place. Yes, yes it's nice to be able to go outside as well. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, And a full kitchen at our disposal as well. Yes, it's a simple IKEA kitchen, but I like the window. Yes. yes. I have lived in London for one year and I had the kitchen like this. Um, viewing the garden, so I wanted to reproduce the same situation here. Very nice. It's very relaxing to cook and look in the garden. Yeah. And uh, I, I say for myself that living in Rome is easier because I know I can come here when I want. Mm -hmm. It's quiet, mm -hmm. yes. And here you, in half an hour, can go skying or can go to the sea. So it's a region that has everything, Le Marche. Uh, we say Italy in one region, Italia in una regione. Oh, it's uh, <laughs> yes, <that's> nice. <laughs> yes, because uh, it, uh, everything is very close, so you can go and see mountains and see it uh, in in one day. <laughs> thank you, and also thank you for your help yesterday when <laughs> <laughs> when we didn't get our bus transfer when we were supposed to. And so. okay, so Rob and I were leaving Rome. And we got on the bus because our friend in La Marque told us, take the bus here and we can rent a car here in Civita Nova. Yes. And so we got on the bus and it's a beautiful bus and a beautiful highway and countryside. We really enjoyed it. Rob was watching on his phone, on his GPS, where we were going and telling me, okay, we're almost there. And then the bus stopped and, the bus, and we're the only ones on the bus. And the bus drivers turned around and said, why are you here? Of course, we didn't speak the language, and they didn't speak our language. And when we realized that we were supposed to have a transfer, then <laughs> the yes. hands went in the air and voices got loud. And oh, really? we oh. couldn't, we, we all, it was, oh, it was just so, so it was embarrassing. Yes. Um, and it was kind of humorous, you know, we didn't know what we'd done, and... I have to say, I did not hear stupid American or crazy American, or I didn't, I did not hear anything huh. like that. I mean, they were, they were polite, um, except for maybe on the telephone with you. So <laughs> yes, because was... <laughs> I have to, I made a mistake in communication because I told, uh, nobody was able to tell them in English that I had to change the bus. Oh, we are in Italy. We have to speak Italian. <laughs> So, and then wanted to close, but uh, I, it's not, not the first time I say to that bus company, if you want to connect Fiumicino Airport to Marche, you can imagine that people that go on the bus are not Italian. So please, write something, <laughs> um, put a registered voice something because um, it's not it's not the first time it happens and maybe drivers you know in Ital Italian people don't study languages so uh, the drivers of course don't know even English that would be the basis well so, Rob Rob is a is a veteran bus driver or a bus rider in the states and he should have asked if we needed a transfer, and he just didn't think about doing it. So we have to own some responsibility as well. Well, they made up for themselves, honestly, because as we were driving into the bus station back in, I don't know the name of the town, um, the bus driver turns around, and he looks at me, and he goes... Like this, so he's he's doing his hands in a in a sign that he's going to drive a car and pointing to himself, oh. and we didn't really understand what he meant. And then the other bus driver, as the bus was parking, he says, "I'm going to take you to Shavita Nova in my car." Very very nice. And he brought us right to your doorstep. Yeah. It was lovely. We very much appreciated yes. that. We had no idea how we were going to get here, and they had no idea when the next bus was. 
Oh, so that we could get so here. He so he didn't want you to wait too much time in that right. bus stop. And very, his mother lived kind. here. So that worked out well. Uh, <laughs> so. The second one was yes. better. Yes. Sarah, thank you so much. I really appreciate you talking with me. <laughs> uh, so. It's the minimum. What, what could I do? But I was very worried because I couldn't control what they, are, they were doing. So, yeah. uh. <laughs> But they didn't know that I were in Rome. The first one expected oh. that I could come and I, I would oh. have come if, if I was here. And then I explained to the second one, I'm sorry, but I am in Rome. If not, I could come by myself, of course, to take my guests. But I am in Rome and I, I just... I end it in so, a <laughs> <and> happy end. <laughs> happy end, yes. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you to you. After our recording, Sarah had offered to help us rent a car, and Ro neither Rob and I were really very comfortable with the language. Uh, Rob speaks a little bit of Spanish. I don't speak anything but English, I'm sorry to say. And we honestly did not do our homework before we left home, and we didn't really have the rudimentaries even of the Italian language, and so Sarah offered graciously to help us. She also said, let's go to lunch. So we did that first. And she took us out to the seaside to a little, tiny little restaurant that she grew up going to. And her husband, Luca, joined us. And we had the most delightful lunch with them. Conversation flowed, wine flowed, of course. And we had some of the best seafood lasagna. I have never had seafood lasagna and it was amazing. Anyway, from there we went to get the car and she helped to facilitate that, which was very, very helpful too, because we couldn't get the GPS to be, um, to speak to us in English. So we got that worked out and then we took off for our next destination after uh, we'd gotten back to the house and packed everything up and we're, we're halfway down, half an hour down the road, and I got a text from Sarah. Oops. Evidently, Rob had taken his backpack out to the car and left it on the street next to the gate. So we turned around, went back. Sarah met us, and we, we got our, our backpack, and it was just a fluke. I mean, it was just so great that it was still there. We were so happy. Just to give you an idea of how wonderful and charming and sweet the Italians can be. You know, this is way be above and beyond. So we really appreciated that. Thank you, Sarah, for taking care of us. You'll be able to find all of Sarah's contact information at our website. So please do go there. If you're planning a trip to, uh, to Italy, I, I would love to have you connect with her. And please, if you can take a moment to leave a message or, or a rating in iTunes, that would be wonderful. You can find us and join our conversations at the Hosting Your Home Facebook group. And I look forward to being back with you again next week. Take care. <laughs>